the S and P 500 and the Nasdaq 100. As we look at the Nasdaq, you can see you're dropping through some of our levels. You found support in your 18.27 and got back above it. Now, the big thing, if you're looking for downside here on the Nasdaq, was breaking back below 18.3, holding and pushing back to the downside, which that didn't happen. You go into ES, we look at what happened there. Again, you want to see a break retest continuation, and that just didn't happen. So you're seeing that sellers, in my opinion continue to not be able to get that follow through that you're wanting come right into our little bit of a demand down here you're bouncing right out of it holding above previous all-time highs as well established in early march so overall this is still pretty bullish structure in my opinion on the broad market now if you want to see where i think we get bearish if you zoom out you look at the spy this is the chart um i don't make the charts up i just show you what i'm looking at you're still making higher highs and higher lows going all the way back to november that spy you go to queues you look what's happening here you're making higher highs and higher lows since november again this is the basic definition of a bullish trend higher highs and higher lows and that's what's taking place here now could this change yes again in order for cues to get bearish you need to break back below around 433 432 if that happens you could see sellers step in aggressively and get a change of overall tone but until that happens i'm not really worried and i'm looking to buy stocks on these dips for myself now what happened why did we see some drops now you're seeing the fed tone all over the place okay so number one we saw DXY get some love beginning of the day, shoot up, and then end of the day, drop back down, primarily around power hours where that started to take place. You go to the 30-year yield. What happened there? You basically have upward pressure for the remainder of the day. You drop down basically a little bit after going into power hour. That's where we start to drop there. So basically, Fed rate cuts expected a slowdown. The uh, probability of a June rate cut uh, dropped down significantly from like 100% down a little bit lower. And this has happened multiple times on the broad market. So when I see this happen, it's not concerning to me, okay? Because again, when we zoom out, this has happened multiple times since November. You know what's happened here. And this is the important part I always tell you, zoom out. You get a dip, you find support, you bounce. So unless we break structure, we start dipping on SPY and Qs, I'm not really concerned here, okay? Because overall, we look at what the Fed is saying and Fed Master, Fed Daily continue to push this narrative of, Cuts are coming. The market looks good. That's where we're at. She still just wants to see more data to figure out whether those readings were a detour or we're still on the right kind of path. If the economy evolves as expected, then I, in my view, it'd be appropriate for the FOMC to begin reducing the Fed fund rates later this year. And they're still expecting three cuts overall, which that tone has not changed, which once you know these Fed members started talking, going over that viewpoint, again, the NASDAQ clearly and quickly started bouncing right from basically midday just immediately bouncing off support finding buyers for the remainder of the day again the same trend has taken place as well sellers step in in the you know pre-market push us down the market opens we flatline and then we find buyers and we move in the opposite direction again there's been no clear direction in the broad market in my opinion on you know nasdaq and spy uh, we get a nice move in pre-market we stagnate we chop if you zoom out again here on the nasdaq i don't think there's really been any real change of direction you've ultimately traded in between 18.6 locally uh, let me highlight that right there 18.6 to lows of basically 18k a 600 point range since essentially the end of february nothing has happened strong consolidation again what happened the last time we consolidated like this you know, you have to go back to November. You consolidated from November 15th until around December 10th. Um, you had your monster move to the upside. You go back here. This was a longer consolidation, but basically July through almost September. You're in October. You consolidate sideways, slightly going down, and then you take off and have your massive bull run continue. So again, consolidation has been one of the best overall triggers for more upside in the market. Now, I'm not telling you that we have to run or that we have to move in a certain direction, but based on the past year it's been really good overall you go to es and you look what's happening there now i will say it looks worse than what it is because broadly you're still holding above previous march highs now es has been on a direct uptrend since february definitely outperforming what's happened with nasdaq same with the dow they've been performing much better than nasdaq nasdaq and tech seem like they're going to be slowing down and that they have been slowing down which when we go into the second part of this video is why i'm so bullish on tech and overall you know, some of those big market names that we know and love. Now, what I will highlight here, we go look at some of the data very quickly. Refresh, just look really quick what's happened to the volume. Volume still pretty minuscule, 66 million, nothing much happening there. Go back to Edgeville, you're slightly increasing on volume, but nothing's really taking place. There's no real surge. You're still below our average volume. We want to see that volume uptick. 
we need to see an uptick. We need to see us get back to the regular schedule, regular movement overall. The past two, two and a half weeks have been trash as far as market movement, volume, and consistency of what we've had. Now, go to price action. Go to what's happening here um, on the uh, gr green and red day. Sorry, I'm kind of tweaking right there, right? Typically, Tuesdays, Wednesdays aren't our best day. I'm going to make sure it's really clear. Those aren't our best days. Thursday, Friday have been our best days for continuation. So all I'm looking for going into tomorrow, seeing some stagnation, seeing possibly a green day, right? I just don't want to see more continued downside, aggressive downside pushing. That's all I care about right now, okay? Biggest thing, broad market right there, is seeing buyers hold us back above these levels, previous all-time high here on ES, and then on NASDAQ as well, back above 18.4, roughly pushing us back into 18.6, hopefully mounting that level eventually, okay? Now, DXY, what's happening here, broad markets as well as yields. DXY rejecting off those highs once again, pushing back down. I don't really care too much for this, but again, like that's just where we're moving. I'm not super concerned with how we're pricing in cuts either. I don't really care about that. Um, if you look at the broad market, the expectation of cuts and how we've been priced into the market have been wrong like consistently over the past year. So I just don't care. Um, so I'm not really watching that. I care more about what the Fed says, and I believe the market does as well. That's why you moved. 30-year yield. You're still operating in this like channel. It's kind of overextending here. I want to see us drop back down. I do believe once cuts start to come in, this drops below 4%. However, until then, you're in a dangerous territory. We've seen home sales you know, slump. We've seen car sales slump. And it's, it's definitely putting some strain on the market. And the longer this holds up, the worse you have to expect growth to accelerate. To, it's gonna slow, it should slow down. The acceleration on growth should just get slower and slower and slower and slower. Um, and that's kind of what they were talking about with the Fed daily and um, Mester that I mentioned back here, right? So how the economy evolves as expected. And they kind of want to see that slow down as well. So that's what we'll see there. Now, going into broad market stocks, I'm liking stocks on viewing what I'm doing here right now. Number one, though, I will say to you, oil has been going up and oil going up is not good for inflation data. I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, you need to see uh, inflation data, you know, work out better. I will say though, oil has still been in this like a little bit of a channel. We haven't really broken out. So again, maybe room to $90. We'll see how we react there. Now, Bitcoin as well. Nice little dip today. Again, Bitcoin's making higher lows. I continue to say Bitcoin's incredibly bullish. Love it. So still think Bitcoin's very bullish. Do what you want with that information. Now, going to broad market stocks I'm liking. Number one, Robin Hood. Um, you had a great opportunity here on the day. I did not buy more Robin Hood. It was not the stock that I bought more of, but I will go into detail about what I'm liking the most. I still love Robinhood. I'm just very heavy into Robinhood now. Um, I have 2025, 2026 positions, and then I have a smaller uh, September position as well in Robinhood. Um, so do with that as you will. I'm very bullish on this. I think earnings are going to be fantastic. I think this earnings for just Robinhood in general is going to be crazy. Personal opinion, I think you have a lot of money flowing back into the into the brokerage. I think they have a lot of good things working, and I think they're on the right path overall. And they're one of the few companies innovating in the space personal opinion. Now, also too, we take a step further. We look at something like Nvidia tech here. Now I think Nvidia is interesting. Okay. Nvidia ended up hitting both of our targets. I mean, I wonder if this yesterday, how we want to see that downside. You got the break and you saw the downside instantly. So, um, going into like the one hour chart here as well on Nvidia, it's really simple for me. You get back above 924, push back into highs. That's all I really care about being patient here. I think Nvidia looks fine. Buyers continue to step in. You hold every key level. That's what you're looking for there. AMD, I think AMD is one of the better plays out there, but you have to be patient and get back above 185. I continue to say that. You can see we're rejecting. We're sitting in this range, bouncing back and forth. Key level 174.7, key level 185, basically back and forth pinball. You get above 185, I'm a bull, the end. Uh, Tesla um, appears to be absolute trash. Um, so yeah, not interested in that. Coinbase, you had a really nice cup and handle set up. You're kind of just like sitting sideways here. I still think Coinbase is an awesome opportunity. You got to get above 270, 275 and actually hold there. You hold there. I think you're breaking it to 295, then 300, then to all time highs. I think it's totally possible to take place. You might have to wait till those earnings actually come in though. My favorite stock right now is Target. Dear God, I love it. Um, and I, this is the stock that I bought more of today. Um, congratulations to your Discord. If you, you know, traded this into 181, got out, got back into this. It's beautiful. You broke to your key level, broke back down. Um, this is by far my favorite stock out there right now. And again, it's kind of, it's different. I know like sometimes I fall in love with some weird stocks, but uh, target, I think it's grossly undervalued. If you mount 181, 181.5, I think you are going to erupt into 200. There's very little liquidity here. 
one of my favorite names. You get above that, I'm telling you, you're going to go crazy. The earnings have been phenomenal. They are moving on the right direction. I love what they're doing as a company. Compared to Walmart and Costco, they are undervalued, and their earnings speak for themselves. Um, so, yeah, love what Target's doing. Big fan there. Um, broad market as well. Microsoft, you couldn't hold any of your levels, really. You you kind of got into, like, the 415 level today. You bounced off. And then this was Friday. Sorry, but came into like 418 419 nothing really happening there netflix can't get above 615 of over 615 you're bullish in a 625 um again looks decent there amazon i continue to tell you guys amazon it's another massive opportunity i'm just getting heavy into the market now so i'm trying to be careful with going too large into the market i don't want to get too crazy here um but I, I I love Amazon too. You have room in a 186 with ease, a clear ascending triangle on higher time frames. Extremely bullish, looks very good. Google, again, I've hated Google for a while, but I told you guys you mount above 151.5, you're pushing into all-time highs, and you did just that. You mounted again uh 153.8, previous all-time high there as well. Again, looks fan fantastic. So um, yeah, Google is one of the strongest names in the market. This could make a run towards 160. It's killing it with Apple, what their partnerships are doing. Um, and, and yeah, they, they look fantastic. So again, I told you guys about Google a while back. Congratulations if you traded them, if you made money on them. Um, but those are my favorite stocks right now. That's what I'm looking at. Maybe I missed a few names today, but those are the ones that I want to cover. If you have questions, comment down below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. If I miss anything, you think I misspoke, please let me know down below. Have a good one, guys. See you tomorrow.